Welcome to our final week. I'm Jana. And I'm Daniel. Our goal as believers is to allow God to change us and mold us to be like Jesus. We want to conclude our study by giving practical ways in which you can spend time alone with God. Now think about it. Because of our personal relationship with God, unlike other religions out there, we have direct access to Him. I am so thankful for the time I get to spend with God, my conversations with Him, my prayers to Him, in the car, cleaning my house, at work, or even walking my dog. He reminds me that I'm never really alone and that I'm truly loved. But in all honesty, sometimes it's a struggle for me to be consistent in studying God's Word. I see that in myself as well, Jana. I think a lot of times life can get in the way, or if I'm really being honest, sometimes I just don't feel like it. And when I get real with those barriers, it actually helps me to refocus on the why, why studying God's word is important for my relationship with him. As a group, take time to answer these questions. Feel free to pause the video for you to discuss. When you're ready, resume the video for the teaching. I hope you've had a great week. And I wonder if you've been able to incorporate meditation into your rhythms of life. Did you take the challenge of memorizing a verse or a passage? Well, I hope you will share with your group how that went for you. But today, I would like for us to look at how we can incorporate God's Word through our lives and into another one of our spiritual disciplines. It's the discipline of study. Now, many people would call this your time alone with God. This is so important in the daily flow of our lives. It is the process of breathing for the growing believer. It is learning how to feed your soul with the huge pastures of God's Word. God's Word is the feast that God invites you and I into on a daily and moment-by-moment -moment basis. You've heard us continually say that what we experience in our faith that other religions do not have is a relationship with God. But think about it. The basis of every relationship that you and I have is based on communication. So this is how we communicate with our all-powerful and yet personal God. We breathe in His Word and we exhale in our prayer. This is our life. Now Hebrews 4.12 says this, For the Word of God is alive and it is powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between the soul and the spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So now this is the active power of God that we have at our disposal. Why would we not engage it? Now, I'm sure that there are many reasons, but as a disciple of Jesus, we must fight through those barriers to engage God's word. And let's do, let it do its work to transform our character and our actions. Now, one of our barriers is motivation. I get it. Our lives are busy. And if we don't prioritize this time, it will not happen. So I want you to find a great spot. Maybe it is a quiet spot in your home. Some people set up a space even in their closet. But I like reading outside. But here's the thing. I want you to find the best place for you so that you can listen and hear God's Word speak into you. Find the best time where you can be consistent. Now, for me, this is the morning, because I'm a morning person. But for my wife, Jennifer, her best time is in the evening. Maybe for you, it's at a lunch break or when your kids are down for a nap. But the most important thing is that it works for you. Another key motivating factor for me is community. But you may say, wait a minute, aren't we talking about our personal time with God? Well, yes, but community, camaraderie, and encouragement help me overcome a host of motivational barriers. You may remember last session I used the illustration of a workout to represent the importance of spiritual disciplines. Well, here it is again, because I am way more consistent in my workouts when I have a friend who joins me. There's accountability and encouragement and even a push that comes from a fear of letting someone else down if I don't show up. Now, I incorporate this same action uh, with others in my time alone with God to help me be motivated daily. Well, how do I do this? I find a friend and read in the same place in Scripture together, likely a chapter at a time. Now, my friend John has been a great partner for this in, for me. 
We read in the same place in Scripture and comment about what God is saying to us. We use the YouVersion app because it has a place to make notes and share with others in a group. Your friend could be your spouse, your life group, or someone literally on the other side of the world. Who knew that your time alone with God could be a team sport? I hope these ideas get you started to overcome the obstacles of motivation in your time alone with God. But another major obstacle for people is that their personal reading and studying of God's Word is simply that no one's ever given them a method to help them do this. Well, we would like to do this today. I want to show you two great processes for gleaning what God is saying through His Word to you. The first one is one that I have literally been using since I was in the ninth grade. I learned it at a youth conference, actually over in Dallas, and have been using and teaching it ever since. It uses the acronym SPACE, S-P-A-C-E. So when reading through a passage, what I want you to do is read it a couple of times, maybe using a couple of different translations, and ask these questions to that passage. First of all, S, is there a sin in this passage that I should avoid? P, is there a promise for me to keep? A, is there an action in this passage that I should take? C, is there a command that I should follow or obey? And E, is there an example of someone in this passage that I should follow? Now I want you to read James 3, 13 through 4, verse 3, and utilize this message either by yourself or with your group. I'm going to share another method called the discovery method via a link in these videos. Now, I hope that these thoughts and methods will enhance your personal and group discovery and study of God's Word so that you can find what He wants you to hear and to apply in your life. I love learning different ways to study scripture. Being able to find a practical way that works for you to read and learn from God's word is a crucial part of the chair, our time with God. As we wrap up our study, let's remember King Jesus's example on how vital that time with our heavenly father is. How we spend time with God in the chair is the catalyst to the circle and the row. It shapes the way that we serve and live in community, and it cultivates an attitude of celebration and worship. All these things we've learned, it's for you and it's for me to not just retain this knowledge, but to choose to live out every single day. Our purpose is to be like Jesus. So how will you choose to live it out?